so if it's an AMD APU, how can they increase the GPU size by 67% but no CPU change? Is this a totally custom chip for PS5 Pro? Doesn't strike me as a new AMD product or Xbox would have had the exact same upgrade. Uh, Alex, it's not the same. Uh, it is a custom chip. I think we're pretty Completely. clear on that because, you know, we've got custom machine learning in there. And, you know, I think there's going to be a Strix point, Strix Halo based APU from um, AMD, but it's the GPU is nowhere near as this this size. It's more PS5. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think of this question? I, I mean, guess, uh, I guess the question is really, you know, why no CPU why? change? I mean, why I think is uh, price and compatibility and uh, size there. The Some of the larger things that changed in Zen over time were cache sizes. If you go between Zen 1 and Zen 3, um, beefing up all the things that have made Zen better over time are going to be increasing die space. Sony cut off parts of the fpu in the you know the ps5 to in save on die space and things like that so um the manufacturing costs as a result so i think it's it's mainly just they want to push that and they realize that people i think like they realized it with the ps4 pro like yeah that had a arguably larger sizable um <laughs> cpu upgrade than this does but i think they realized like people were just really loved those 4k checkerboard modes they they flaunted them on twitter etc they were really happy with them <laughs> did they i don't know the, the, either way it was a talking point like like it this was looks, yeah it's that, 4K. i think that was the key point yes you're yeah. right there was a yeah. there was a display imperative to produce a better playstation and the right. imperative this time around is basically Mark Cerny saying 75% of people play in performance <laughs> mode. The performance modes don't look as good as they could. Here's the PlayStation 5 Pro to solve that problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it would have otherwise been much more transformative and a much larger gap towards next. I'm sorry, a much closer step towards next gen if they changed it to a later Zen version. It would also have been more expensive like than it already is right now i think it's calculated very very well right i don't think it's necessarily the best thing ever i've said it tons of times on the, before on the channel if someone had a ryzen 5 3600 and they're upgrading their gpu i would say don't yeah. do that they a different <laughs> system so it's, it's very different than what i would do but that doesn't mean the audience isn't fine with it right? i think there's a thing here which is that um this isn't going to be addressing people who want a high-end PC because, you know, the whole PC ecosystem now is it's kind of moved on from 60 frames per second. It's like 144 upwards uh, right. with VRR. And, you know, for that, you're going to need a more modern CPU architecture. You're going to need like Ryzen 5000 X3D, Ryzen 7000, latest Intel Core. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of the way that is happening in the PC space. And that's not something that's being addressed by the PS5 Pro. It's, it is literally, you know, a better looking PS5 experience. It's not high end PC. It's not really troubling it in that regard. Right. Um, John, any thoughts on this? Uh, not especially. I think you yeah. guys have covered this pretty thoroughly. I think the cost <laughs> issue is is probably quite a big thing because, you know, mm -hmm. the, the chip is going to be pretty large as it is. And yep, yep, um, yep. die space area uh, on that die matters uh, a lot. And the mm -hmm. later Zens do occupy significantly more die area. And they're probably not getting proportionately the same boost in performance as you would from, you know, adding a GPU that's much larger, along with machine learning based upscaling. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's just, you know, the way it is, unfortunately. Next gen, though, who knows? Mm -hmm.